deliberately breaking laws which are deemed unjust or racist, civil resistance represents an attempt to implement laws such as those contained in the Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act, which are deemed just but which are abrogated by the political class. The civil resistor wants his or her day in court so as to demonstrate before a judge or jury that they are upholding the law in the face of state-sponsored unlawfulness. Often, citizens will attempt citizens' arrests upon those who they believe would be criminalized under the laws they seek to enforce. Would Splitting the Sky attempt a citizen's arrest when Bush came to Canada on March 17, 2009? What a $5,000 fine! What does that say for the standards of the movement in this world? What does that say for the peace movement? What does that say for the anti-war movement? What does that say for the 9-11 movement? Will you allow me to sit in a jail and rot in a jail for two years and possibly be a candidate for a, uh, a, a rendition, extraordinary rendition to another country to be tortured and killed at the behest of these demons that sit at the, at the, at the peak of power? Well, I certainly hope not. I hope that if I do go to jail, that I become a catalyst man for a movement that will refuse to allow these criminals to get away with anything more. And everywhere that they go, every place that they go, they move, that the people move to criminalize the real criminals, to apprehend these criminals, to bring them to justice, and to meet out the sentences necessary for the appropriate crimes of mass murder and genocide. Well then that's what we gotta do. We gotta get for real for this. Well, you got your ads now. I've got that in camera. Hello. Man. It's the break, man. I've got that in camera, man. Good. Nice one, bro. Yeah, Get back. <laughs> Through it, I was thinking, uh, you know, you, you are becoming very valuable. Uh, Not supposed to act to prosecute unless there is no domestic court that is both willing and able. Movement, there was a rise of the Black Panther parties. This is a, a kind of global movement. Bush is in Calgary to give his first public speech since leaving the White House. He dined in Kensington last night. But right now, Canada, you should be ashamed of yourself. Bush wasn't arrested. In fact, he seemed to be quite content during an evening on the town last night. Instead, police arrested him. You have got to we have asked you. Uh, eventually it came down to splitting the sky, confronting the police, guarding the TELUS Convention Center, essentially saying, well now, will you arrest George W. Bush? Will you do your job? Will you enforce the rule of law? And no doubt they were under orders to protect the group inside the convention center, including the former U.S. President George W. Bush, uh, from the demonstrations, from the protesters. Uh, so by the time the police were addressed by the splitting the sky and then uh, made it clear to him that they had no intention of arresting George W. Bush, he, he informed them that he would, he would do that. He would uh, conduct a citizen's arrest. And he did break through police lines, and he was slammed down into the into the ground. He's 57 years old. He was flipped over like a pancake. Uh, handcuffs were put on him, and uh, after he regained his wind and after he stood up, he declared very clearly, "Arrest George Bush, not me. Arrest George Bush, not me." Uh, if you go to the tapes and see what the group, or what the people were saying, the protesters were saying. They were saying, uh, arrest George Bush, do your job, pointing at the police, do your job. What do you guys think you're doing? Arrest Bill!
Detention Center over the lunch hour, where former U.S. President George Bush was speaking at a paid event. While luncheon attendees entered the convention center today, protesters gathered outside. And shortly after noon, police arrested four people for a number of reasons. One threw a shoe at the building. He got arrested. One spit on a police officer. Others were arrested for trying to get inside the building. Reg Hampton was there in the middle of the melee covering this story. Reg, uh, have the people who were arrested today been charged? Uh, they will be charged, Jocelyn. Uh, you know, things got pretty hairy here for a while. Obviously, things have ended now, uh, but for a while it was very tense with police and uh, protesters clashing. Splitting the Sky was arrested and charged with obstructing a police officer. He was kept in prison overnight while Professor Anthony J. Hall camped outside the police station waiting for the embattled civil resistor to be released by the police. The media were typically cynical about the idea that Bush would be arrested. They chose to side with their political paymasters rather than advertise the rampant illegality which had taken place with Bush's visit to Calgary. Rather than acknowledge that Gail Davidson, Professor Hall and Splitting the Sky, among others, had exhausted all possible avenues prior to Bush's March 17th engagement, including writing a letter to the relevant politicians and law enforcement officials informing them of their legal responsibility to arrest Bush if he came to Canada, the media depicted the arrest of Splitting the Sky as an isolated incident, which was dishonest. Moreover, the media, in typical uniformity, only showed pictures of one of those who was arrested, the orange jacketed individual who enters the fray when Splitting the Sky was being shoved violently into the police wagon. Professor Hall alleged that this individual was a police plant. They, did, they covered that individual, who, who I am alleging was planted there by the police purposely to divert attention from a story, from a deep story that has a lot of implications. We were in Prime Minister Stephen Harper's home riding, the power base of the current government of Canada. Suddenly when one looks at his seemingly coordinated intervention and takes into consideration the fact that none of the organizers knew who he was, it seems plausible that this individual was planted to divert attention away from the arrests of those law enforcing citizens who had legitimate concerns about the illegality implicit to the Bush visit. The, the, the deeper uh, motivation here was to put pressure on Canadian authorities. You know, whether you like or dislike George Bush, that really wasn't a major thing. Uh, he's a former president. Uh, what our issue was is this is an issue of, of law. Uh, and so our real protest was directed against uh, Canadian law enforcement officials. Uh, and the media just completely uh, ignored that aspect of it, treated the demonstration as if it was simply to show uh, dislike of George Bush. No, it was to show uh, and put pressure on and demonstrate and dramatize the need for Canadian officials, the imperative for Canadian officials, law enforcement officials, to enforce the Canadian Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act, to respect our role in the International Criminal Court, to respect uh, the fact that uh, the Geneva Conventions on Torture have clearly been violated. Here, there I am in Calgary, and these sto this story is not to be told. This story is deemed to be somehow not uh, suitable for, for citizens in my country to, to hear about. I watched the CBC you know, cover it up. I talked to a journalist who I know. I go on the CBC a lot. I mean, he couldn't, he couldn't just run away from the facts. Like, I don't want to know these, this information. Please don't tell me this information. I uh, took a complaint to the ombudsman of the CBC. With the failure of the politically controlled media to publicize the fact that a man was due to stand trial for attempting to implement Canadian law and international law, it was left to the citizenry to do the media's job for them. Making things worse, certain institutionally funded members of the peace movement, who often work closely with the police to restrict and circumscribe the actions of protesters, decided that splitting the sky was, quote, too radical to be allowed to speak on public podiums. Between police force, and uh, I, I'm not going to say anything about that, but I, I, I would like to say that uh, our organizing committee has had 
a very good relationship with the Saskatoon police.